Hello, seventh graders. We are moving on from adding and subtracting integers to multiplying and dividing integers. This is in lesson one six in your book, and I believe it starts on page 51. So if you're following along with that, excellent. If you are taking notes, awesome and even better. Make sure you bring those report to check in class. There are some rules for multiplying and dividing integers, and if you know the rules, you will be fine. Okay, so the product or quotient of two numbers with the same sign is always positive. So what I mean by that is you guys definitely know that 2 times 2 is 4. Okay, that's also going to be the same because these are both positive. Your answer is positive. If you were to multiply, though, negative 2 times negative 2, since those are the same, it equals a positive also. In this case, you know, people tell you two wrongs don't make a right. When multiplying integers, two negatives multiplied together do equal a positive. So kind of think about that there. Same sign is always positive. Negative times a negative is a positive. Another rule is that if the signs are different, it's always negative. This is when you're multiplying two numbers together, remember. Two numbers, okay? So that's an even number of numbers. What that looks like is if I were multiplying negative 4 times a positive 1, my answer would be a negative 4 because this is a negative times a positive equals a negative. Think about that, too, as, okay, well, maybe this is kind of like two things that don't get along. Um, you hear your parents maybe talk about politics a lot. If people from different parties, you know, a one party, a negative party, a positive party, their experience together probably is going to be pretty negative. They're not going to agree, okay? So you put two things together that don't belong, you're going to end up with a negative experience. So you can kind of help use that to help you. The order doesn't matter either. So if I did a positive times a negative, I would still end up negative because the signs are different. So those are the rules when multiplying and dividing integers. Pretty easy rules, you wanna remember those. Same positive, different negative. On the right, you can give a couple of these a try. What I like to do is look at them and ask. So if I'm looking at negative three times negative two, I say are the signs the same or different when I'm multiplying? And since they're the same, right away, I know my answer is gonna be positive. And then I multiply the, normal, the numbers as. I normally would. 3 times 2 is 6. The second one here is actually negative 6 squared. Notice these parentheses. Negative 6 squared. That's so you know that that's a negative 6. That is the same as negative 6 times negative 6. Well, I know that a negative times a negative, when the sign is the same, the answer is positive. 6 times 6 is 36. Just below, I see 7 times negative 11. Are the signs the same or different? Well, 7's positive, 11's negative. If they get together, it's probably not going to be a positive experience. Different signs have negative products. A negative product is going to be 7 times 11 for 77. So negative 77. I just realized I've been using the word product and I'll be using the word quotient. Please remember that product is the answer to a multiplication problem. Quotient is the answer to a division problem. Okay? So, then we're on to another multiplication. Negative 2 times 6. The signs are different of two numbers, so my answer is negative. Different, negative. Negative 2 times 6. 2 times 6 is 12, so this will be a negative... 12. I mostly talked about multiplication for now. On the left there, the same rules apply. Same size, same signs, the answer is positive. Same sign, different signs, the answer is negative. And I showed multiplication examples. Well, the same rules apply for division. Say I had a positive 4, and now I divided by a negative 2. Going down here for the different signs. Well, those negatives what would I have to multiply that negative 2 by to get to a positive 4? 
Well, I would have had to multiply by negative 2. So you can kind of reverse that. This is your division sentence. A multiplication sentence to work backwards would be negative 2 times negative 2 equals 4. So same sign. We have the same sign. We get a positive answer. We have different signs. So we have a negative answer. Okay, so it works the same way for division. Sorry that got a little messy there. You can organize how you want to in your notes. So going down below here for the division problems, negative 20 divided by 5. Well, the signs are different, negative divided by positive. So my answer will be negative. 20 divided by 5 is 4. Just below that, we have 20 divided by negative 5. Again, signs are different. So my answer, my quotient, is negative. Again, 20 divided by 5, 4. Just below there, then, I have negative 20 divided by negative 5. Well, same signs. Negative divided by negative is a positive. Same is positive. Okay? So you want to, you know, go back, rewind, try those again, and think through them on your own. That would be an excellent idea. So those are the rules for two integers. The rules when there is more than one or more than two integers, if there's three or more, there's some rules to do that, okay? Some rules are if there's an even number of integers, of even number of negatives, I'm sorry, struggling today, even number of negatives, the answer is going to be positive. So here, on this first one, I have two negatives, so I know that my answer is going to end up to be positive. And you can just multiply as normal. I might start to make it negative, to make it positive right away, and go, since I can do multiplication in any order, I may do negative 2 times negative 5 is a positive 10, and then multiply that by 13. And I know anytime I multiply by 10, I really just add a 0 on. So these all together are 130. Positive 130. If there are an odd number of negatives, the ne answer is negative. So on this other one, we see that we have three negatives. One, two, three. Since two negatives get a positive, if I have one extra that's not paired up, it's kind of the odd man out, making the whole thing negative. It's kind of like if you have a third wheel. It's kind of a negative situation. Someone feels left out. So I can do this. Negative times a negative is a positive, but then I have to multiply that by the other negative, and a positive times a negative is a negative, and 3 times 8 is 24. Okay, so those are kind of the rules. If there's more than two integers, count up the number of negatives. If it's an even number of negatives, 2, 4, 6, 8, etc., then the answer should be positive. If there's an odd number of negatives, 3, 5, 7, etc., the answer will be negative. Looking at evaluating the expression. Okay, remember evaluating the expression. What they say here is negative 2a minus b if a equals negative 3 and b equals negative 5. So if you recall from lesson 1, 2, what they want us to do is substitute in the values of a and the value for b. So just like I would, I would rewrite I would rewrite this in my, no, in my notebook, so I know what I started with. I would rewrite the sentence and then show filling it in. So negative 2 times a, which is negative 3, minus b, I fill in the whole thing, which is negative 5. Do not use this as your negative. That is a subtraction sign, so that needs to stay. So from here, I can use my PEMDAS, my order of operations, to help me solve. I see that I have multiplication and subtraction. So what comes first is my multiplication. I see that negative 2 and negative 3 are the same sign, so their product will be positive 6. And then I rewrite the problem minus that negative 5. Then I know that I can add the opposite, and then I'm going to end up with a positive plus a positive, I remember, is a positive 11. Okay. And there are some in your book um, to give more of those a try if you'd like. Okay, and then there's a word problem, a word problem. On five plays, the Hawks completed passes for 15, negative 2, 8, 4, and 5 yards. 
what was the average number of yards per pass? So let's pull out our important information. Five plays, a total of five, with the amounts of 15, negative 2, 8, 4, and 5 yards. Then we're looking for what the average is per pass. So I have to go back and I have to remember that average means find adding up the total and dividing by the number in this case, dividing by five plays. Total yards in five plays. So I'm gonna do my first things first. I'm gonna add up the total passes completed. So 15, and then that's plus a negative two, plus eight, plus four, plus five. That's where I got these numbers. And that's all gonna be divided over five. Since I know this is a division bar, I can't divide until I have the top part worked out. So I'm going to do that in my own little way. If you do it different, that's fine. What I notice is that these two are 13, uh, plus I know these two are 12, and then plus 5. Well, I know these two together, I work upwards sometimes, are 25, and then my plus 5. So I realize that 30 yard of passes were completed and I still have to do that over five. So 30 yards of passing were completed in five plays. Once I divide, I realize that that is six yards, since that was my top value, per one play. And I would label this because it's important since it's a word problem. Okay, so a couple different steps there um, to figure things out. And that's kind of how we're going to do things. So um, multiplying and dividing, we're going to watch a cool ninja video when we come to class on the next day here. And you're going to come do some activities, do some work, and we're gonna really going to have a nice time with this. So come with your notes, come with your questions. And again, remember, you can rewatch. You can look at the book, which looks a little different, but similar examples. And you can also watch personal tutor videos and other resources that the book provides for you. So awesome job. Um, I hope you had, took good notes, wrote down good questions. Remember to take your NICU, and we will see you in class. class.